say happy Valentine's Day. Uh, it's coming tomorrow and it is celebrated in many countries as um, the day to recognize not only lo romantic love, but to recognize love as the biggest force on earth. Uh, so today I would like to share some uh, thoughts that can help you um, to understand uh, what language can be very helpful in establishing good communication, whether with your partner or friend, but mostly romantic, really, in, in your romantic relationship. I am also located in the Seattle area and also enjoy snow. And today is a Luna New Year. Yes, yeah, so those who celebrate and observe it, mm -hmm. Happy New Year and may your dreams come true. And a romantic relationship is always um, a great part of our life. We feel more fulfilled, connected, uh, loved, valuable. And probably this is the qualities we are looking for when we are looking for some relationship. So let us go back, not forward, yeah. Uh, how can we do this? It does not allow me to go. Uh -huh. All right. So um, before we start a relationship, we probably think what role I would like to play. If you meet somebody for the first time, uh, we start with a date, right? And a date, uh, it's the, um, we call a date a person. If we are invite this person to meet and we call this person a date. So when it is more stable relationship, we can say it's a boyfriend or girlfriend. And it can be uh, when it is committed relationship, we can also progress to another role as a partner. Uh, do you know what is it suitor is? Do you know suitor? Who knows what it means? No? So, um, Usually if um, a woman has several um, knows, several guys who look for her attention and maybe would like to marry her, this is those people are called suitors. So have you heard about the, uh, such expression, the twin flame? This is when you find a person who really like your soulmate, that you recognize this person at first sight. Um, and that somehow is ignited inside of you. And sometimes they say it can come only once in your life. And we are looking for a twin flame. There is another very close expression, old flame. Who knows what it means, old flame? You can put it in chat or you can raise your hand if you know what it means. Nobody? I see Jose. You want, okay. Go ahead and speak, Jose. Okay, uh, the uh, old flame is something that you have been uh, uh, in the kind of uh, um, romantic or sexual uh, relationship, and probably uh, that fade or or the person go away, and for some reason expected or unexpected, uh, the person returns or you meet her again or come close to your to to your uh, s circle of friend or something like that. Yes, exactly so. Thank you so much for this clarification. Yes. 
And it happens, right? Because when uh, it was really a flame, you will never forget this person. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, fiancé and uh, fiancé, uh, there is a man and a woman, right? And um, with double E, it's a, a female. Uh, and uh, with one E, it's a male, usually. This is when uh, people are already engaged, right? And committed to the relationship and maybe preparing for a wedding. And during the wedding, it is a bride and groom. Uh, the bride is a, usually female, usually. Now it can be, um, we have different genders. Uh, that also possible um, from different perspective, but traditionally it's a bride is a role for a girl and a groom for a, for a uh, male. And then husband and wife, and I hope you know the expression spouse. It um, refers to both either husband or wife. And usually the word spouse is used in um, legal documents in forms that you have to fill out. So this is a good word to know. So it's a synonym for a husband or a wife. Right. So before you um, choose the words you need to know and to uh, use for romantic relationship, whether to start, to maintain, uh, to ignite, uh, you need to know your role and your goals in this relationship. Because the language itself is vast, it's like an ocean, and you pick up the tools and words that can express your desires and um, uh, contextualized in this particular situation. So that is why some other terms that can define what kind of relationship are you in. And it can start with casual dating versus committed relationship. Uh, do you know the expression uh, to go steady? Right? Even in the um, school, um, when young people uh, started dating seriously and uh, they want to see only each other and do not um, see other people, they can even exchange some token of love and friendship. It can be a bracelet or maybe necklace. And uh, it's go we are going steady, it means, right? It's not engagement, but sort of commitment to see only each other. So um, the majority of people uh, are looking for long-term relationship and uh, any type of relationship starts with the language and conversation. That is why um, if you are dating um, an English speaking person, not necessarily from England or America, but the person who speaks English. So there are some kind of norms and uh, expectations uh, for um, usage uh, of uh, names of endearment or how would you address a person and uh, how would you even uh, express what you would like in this relationship. So, and this is forms of different type of relationship. Nowadays, even long distance is possible, right? Now relatives, um, even in the same city, uh, are committed to a long, uh, long distance relationship. And thanks goodness we have Zoom now and other um, technologies that um, help us to stay connected. 
Um, so there are two different um, expressions that we uh, cannot <laughs> mix them up. There is open relationship and to be open to a romantic relationship, right? So let us discuss what do you, what is it uh, open to, to a romantic relationship? You can ask probably a person, are you open to a romantic relationship? So uh, who can tell us, what can it mean? Are you open to a romantic relationship, for example, Jose? <laughs> um, well, I am on the relationship now, so uh, I, I will not say that I'm open to a relationship. But um, in that circumstances, I could be, of course. I have been in the past. Mm -hmm. So how would you express uh, your um, intention to a person with whom you would like to be in the relationship? If I'm not yet? Uh, yes. What do you mean if I'm not yet? Yes. I'll say... Ah, uh, uh, I'll say, ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. I will get, uh, it's not easy to say. <laughs> uh, we, would you be interested in the start the dating me or? Uh, yes, we don't. Uh, all, all, all you have dinner to eat me tonight. It's, yes, it's, yes, exactly. So we think about it, right? This is our yeah. goal. But we do not say it up front. We just want to connect to a person, maybe to invite for a cup of coffee, right? Or to go for a walk. And then in conversation, language creates this space and this connection. Yes. Uh, all right. So in open relationship, right? Nowadays, it's also possible, not only nowadays, but uh, it also is going on. Um, and I have um, a funny story about um, uh, invitation to the um, uh, swing uh, party, right? And I thought it was a dance party but it was a, a party where people exchange partners, where they are connected in open relationship. And it was completely new to me. I did not even know such thing existed. So it was miscommunication, right? And I thought I spoke English and, <laughs> and I could understand the culture, but somehow, some things uh, can have different uh, things. Like for example, the word baby, right? So what meanings of the, of the word baby do you know? Anybody who can tell us? When do we use baby? Mm -hmm. So this couple has such a beautiful baby. Or, oh, baby, not tonight. Mm -hmm. And, oh, you are such a baby. Right? All these three expressions have the word baby, but they, these words mean different things. Right? So the first one, what does it mean? So it's a little child, right? They have a baby. The second one, baby, you're my baby. It's an um, endearment and um, a sweetheart, right? Something that I would like to cuddle, that I love to uh, like to hug. Usually it can be in romantic relationship, addressing to another person, to your partner. And the third one, it's almost uh, like complain or insult that the person is Im immature. Right? There's one comment in the chat from yes. uh, Delaram who says, dear, I think the, the meaning of baby is like yes. dear. Yes. As you were yes. mentioning, a term of endearment. Oh, here, yes. there's another Thank comment. You. Yes. It can be used for both male and female. Yes. 
Yeah, so a term of endearment that can be used for either male or female in a romantic relationship. In a romantic, yes, so very good. Thank you. All right. All right, then how do how we feel also can differ from moment to moment or from a period of life or uh, in stage in the relationship. So people are attracted to somebody, then they can fall in love, they, then they can uh, uh, be, uh, you can have a, adoration and they can be swept from their feet with this um, smartness and beauty, or then it can be heartbroken, depending what is going on. So these are expressions, uh, how people feel and um, what really, uh, what can happen to them uh, during this uh, romantic relationship. And it is a, a good thing to know how to express it, how you feel. Uh, I wonder if you know what it means, unrequited love. So do you know this expression? And can you give an example? Yeah, anybody? When you love someone, uh -huh. Uh, but the, the, the other person does not love you. Yes, yes. So. Or don't don't it, want you to love her. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Nicole, can you tell us how is it a British pronunciation? It is different from uh, US. You know, you, do you know? The US? Actually, I, I do not no off the top of my head i would have yeah. to look it up in a dictionary um but the american pronunciation yeah. is definitely unrequited like you yes. have here mm -hmm. um but british mm -hmm. yeah, british i suspect bit... it's quite similar similar mm -hmm. unrequited yes unrequited. so can we pronounce yes unrequited love right so he is in love but it is unrequited love right mm -hmm. the girlfriend the girl he loves does not respond right yeah or in, in um Aj ajar i'm not sure the pronunciation of um mm -hmm. ajar i think you're unmuted are you able to speak is your sound working yes yes i can speak i think how do we say your name? Is it Azhar? Uh, Azhar, A-Z-H-A-R, Azhar. Okay, I just noticed you left something in the chat there. Um, go ahead and share. Okay. Uh, yeah, but, uh, I have already mentioned it that uh, unrequited love, it means one-sided love. The one person loves and the other doesn't reciprocate. Yes, yes, it's correct. All right. Now, do you believe um, in love at first sight? Mm -hmm. Did it happen to you? Can you t tell us a story? I think that would be good in the chat. How many <laughs> people yeah. believe in love at first sight? That would be a good poll, actually. How many yeah. <laughs> people believe in love at first sight? Yeah, you can put yes or no. Has it happened to you? Mm -hmm. If it's uh, happened to you, then you believe. If not, then you maybe don't believe. <laughs> and everybody's a little bit shy out there. Mm -hmm. Is love at first sight actually possible or not, in your opinion? <gasps> Ken says no. When we talk about uh, love at first sight, uh, initially it's uh, infatuation. Oh. Uh, when it is materialized, it, it is uh, uh, termed as a love at first sight. Mm. De La Ram also says no. I see. Oh, so it sounds like everybody is saying kind of no. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> say yes? Is there love at first sight? I don't know. I we'll say yes. I, I believe in love at first sight. And actually, that's how I met my husband. When I saw him, I fell in love and I just instantly knew that 
that's the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. Oh. And we've been happily married for eight years now. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's a nice story. (laughs) Anybody else in favor of love at first sight? I wouldn't say in favor, but um, believe that it's possible or have a good story for us. Oh, I see a yes. Oh, Peishan. Yes, but it's never happened to her. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I believe in love at first sight. I Mm -hmm. think definitely there is a chemistry between people that for whatever reason, when you first meet somebody that you immediately have an attraction or you don't. Mm-hmm. Personally, I think, that's what uh, I think. Yeah, I would like to add, I think uh, we all, be, uh, we, uh, many of people believe in it, but uh, uh, it doesn't happen with everybody. It depends. True. I think so. True. And I don't know. It depends all, I think on, on other belief systems. I mean, some people believe that there's reincarnation and then maybe we've Mm -hmm. maybe possibly experienced a prior life together with certain Mm -hmm. people. And when we see them, we immediately reconnect, even though we consciously don't realize what's going on. I mean, some people may believe that and some people don't. It just kind of depends on, I think your spiritual beliefs. Mm -hmm. Um, But if that's a possibility that we've perhaps been either, uh, you know, lovers or spouses or, or parent and child or some had a relationship in a prior life, mm-hmm. I think there would be an instant connection. Your souls would recognize each other. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, wonderful. Now, can you put it in chat at least three characteristics what attracts, uh, what attract you in another person? It can be physical attraction, or it can be some uh, uh, per- personality type. So three things. How do you know that? Uh, what type of people uh, seem to be attractive to you? Are you all thinking, I hope? I only have one answer yes. in the chat. Hopefully mm-hmm. you're thinking. Yeah, put it in the chat. Three things. Okay, here we go. What is the main attraction? I'm going to wait just a moment because yes, I want to see yes. what some, some people have already answered, but others are still answering. And while we are waiting, Nicole, um, I uh, have a, a video of a song, uh, but I did not um, activate the sound share. Do I need oh. to go back? Yeah, you'll need to unshare. And mm-hmm. do you know where the share uh, sound is, the button for that? Yeah, yes. Yeah. But I so you to have to unshare? To unshare? unshare and then you have to go reshare with Um, the sound it's i don't know i always do that too it's i don't know that that's yeah it's not very well placed Mm -hmm. all right are you ready for some responses yet Mm -hmm. yes okay oh i see lots of responses coming now okay Mm -hmm. so um de la ram says kindness and honesty Mm -hmm. are attractive um Ashar says anything. It could be anything. Hmm. Let's see. Jane says self-discipline. Hmm. And Ashar says uh, physical is important. Uh, smartness and conduct. I'm guessing behavior. Yeah. So behavior, intelligence, and um, mm-hmm. physical attributes. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Jose says it's not the same in in every case. Could be different. Mm -hmm. Ooh, soberness. Hmm. We might need to elaborate on soberness. Is that seriousness or not or not drinking? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Because when I think of sober, I think of a person who who Mm -hmm. has stopped drinking that used to be an alcoholic. Yes. Sometimes Um, words can be confusing. Like uh, in America, there are signs on the road, don't drink and drive, <laughs> right? So yeah. it can be what kind? I cannot drink <laughs> even water or what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. So, and let's see, ra- responsibility, Elvira says, um, being responsible. 
And again, not the same in every case. Hmm. Oh, here, here's some more. <gasps> Gentle and tall. <gasps> tall. Interesting. Actually, th I think that's a good question. Is height important? Somebody's tall or short. Should they be taller than you if they're a man? What happens if you're a woman and you're very tall? Let's mm -hmm. see. Intelligence and punctuality. Curious. I'm curious on the how important is the physical attribute of being tall? How important is that? Maybe somebody would like to elaborate. Yes, please. Volunteer. You can raise your hand. Oh, I've got some more here. Let's see. Mm -hmm. um, funny, honest, empathetic, and smart. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Who's that? I can't quite see here. That says Carito. And um, okay. Peishan says, I guess the uh, being tall is not very important, but maybe being attractive is? Hmm. Yeah. Curious. Yeah. I actually, well built. There you go. <laughs> I have a nice, nice body. I mm -hmm. have a cousin, okay. a female cousin, who is, I think she's six feet tall, which is quite tall for a woman. Quite tall. And her husband is quite short. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And he is about five foot four inches or somewhere around maybe five foot three. He's, he's pretty short. So she is much taller than he is. I mean, like the difference is, is very, very noticeable. Um, but they've been married for like 30 years. <laughs> so I think she, she has a very strong personality and mm -hmm. she knows what she wants and she doesn't care what people think. So anyhow, so she has a good life <laughs> and they've been married a long time. They have a nice life and anyhow so yeah. yeah I'd say to each his own to use yes. the expression like yes. you know everybody's different and um mm -hmm. I think sometimes you have to have the courage to realize what's important and realize that well yeah. maybe height yeah. is not mm -hmm. the most important factor yes and you know according to love um, uh, mm -hmm. experts who give some suggestions how to attract a person of your love or how to stay in love in love and relationship they say that really uh, physical um, um, characteristics are not as important even age is not important oh it's, my goodness what is important is how you feel about yourself so starting with love self-love is very important how you mm. present yourself because when you believe that you are capable and uh, <laughs> um, lovable and beautiful, at least inside, then you present yourself in a different way. It um, tells um, in a posture, right? In your tone of voice, how you look at a person and it actually starts with yourself. So they say in age uh, and size do not matter really. And I know several people who are recently got married in their 90s oh my gosh yeah 90 years old 90 i was thinking when you old, said in right? the 90s i was thinking the year right <laughs> in their 90s in no, their 90s when, oh my goodness yeah, oh my goodness oh what i was laughing at somebody wrote what are you laughing at i said i was laughing because the question when I was talking about my cousin, so the question here was, how can they hug each other? She's much taller. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe they're sitting. <laughs> Anyhow. Well, it's very common for the woman to be much shorter than the man. That's totally common. So yes. Yes. they figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for a lovely conversation and your contribution. All right. So before we go into some expressions that we can give to each other to ignite this love, to um, say the words of appreciation, um, let us start with the first date when you just start in the relationship. What can it be? Um, what um, uh, what is the first step? to uh, express your appreciation and to, uh, to say that you are attracted, to uh, let them know that you are interested in keeping this relationship. Who can tell us? Mm 
So before you say you mean the world to me, it's probably all these expressions are for people who have been in the relationship for some time. But before you, you, you say something to a person to express that you are attracted. What do we call these words? Anybody? Are you meaning how are how would you express your interest in somebody when you're yes, yeah, early, to, to pay, early to pay, just, pay, just started dating? Yes, yes, yeah. To pay a compliment, right? To yeah. to say something nice to a person, to acknowledge some good attributes, but it can be very tricky, especially in the United States, right? So, for example, uh, with the, um, the movement of uh, me movement, that women can feel that they're appreciated also as a, a person, not only for feminine qualities or physical attributes. Somehow it, it is, it's a whole science how to, to say something. It is advised that to uh, say, not to speak about body at all, but you can say, oh, this dress is good on you, but not that, oh, your figure is good, right? Or your, I love your body. <laughs> so, right. And however, in Europe, maybe it's fine. Yeah, but not in the United States. Well, right? I would say, well, maybe, yeah. maybe not. Yeah. Um, there's a there's several comments in the chat here. Please. Um, Ken, Ken was saying very good explanation and presentation. Uh -huh, thank you. So, um, Azhara is talking about culture being playing a big part, a big role in expression, and I think that that is really important. Mm -hmm. And then he mentions that um, Asian people come across with different. Pe Let's see. Ah, oh, okay. So Azhara is talking about the limitations he feels, cultural limitations about expressing feelings, and maybe not being able to express what he wants to with different cultures. Mm -hmm. So we probably want to talk about that more. All right. um, mm -hmm. Let's see, De La Rome said with I, I'm not sure. Oh, I think uh, De La Rome is mentioning, um, you express with your eye, maybe communicate with your eyes. Yes. Hmm, yes. that's interesting. Oh yes, eyes tell, oh, tell the truth. Yes, eyes tell the truth, that's true. Facial expression, body language, eyes. And let's see, Jane does not trust what people say. And she mentions, yes, you have to look at and see how people act. Yes. So no matter what they say, does not mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. hmm. No, and that's true. I think uh, when there is a difference between words and kind of behavior, we definitely look at the behavior and believe yes. the behavior. And right. that's super true. Super, super true. So uh, very, very interesting. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, and American culture is is quite different from other cultures on what what's the norm. Can you comment on somebody's body? Um I would say if you're in a workplace, you can definitely say, "Oh, that's a beautiful dress on you." But you would never say like, "That dress really makes your figure look, you know, makes your body look so beautiful." No. No. If, but that's in a workplace, right? In work, you never ever want to say anything that can be construed as a sexual in a workplace. Um, but I don't know. In dating, it's kind of, and we have so many different cultures here too. What one person thinks is is acceptable, another one doesn't. So that's really tricky. Yes, that's why probably it's not a good idea to do it on the first date. But when you know the person or in steady relationship, then you can comment on the body also. I think if you're making, um, my feeling is when somebody is making a comment on your body when they have just met you, all they mm -hmm. want is sex. That's all. Right. That is kind right. of my feeling. And I think it's mm -hmm. kind of like a cue, like, 
if somebody says that and the other person engages, that that's just going to be a, a quick sexual relationship, that it's not going to be a real relationship. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my feeling behind it is don't be, I mean, unless that's what you want, you know, comments, direct comments on the body very early is mm -hmm. very, that's all I want. It's not a relationship that's going to be taken seriously. Right. And then it can be one night stand. Right? And that's, yeah, that's my feeling about when you're mm -hmm. making body comments very early. Right. Once mm -hmm. you, you know, once you're in a committed relationship with somebody and you're like, oh, wow, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's more appropriate in, in a longer term relationship, um, mm -hmm. you know, once you're there. Yes. So be careful. Yeah. <laughs> be careful. Be careful mm -hmm. about what um, um, intention you're kind of sending out, you know, because you're communicating with mm -hmm. what you say. Yes. And of course, um, um, body language also touches, right? Even to touch somebody's hand is also a sign that you would like to be in a more intimate relationship. And if you allow to keep your hand, then it is a first step towards this relationship at the beginning, right? So keeping the uh, hands in hands to walk in hands, it's a, a sign of intimate relationship. Um, so compliments, uh, it's a whole science and it is very culturally uh, uh, contextualized. That's why uh, you probably need to see the whole picture in which area and probably even in the United States, it would be different in the South uh, of America, your United States or in the Northwest. It would be different languages and different ways of expression. Um, yes, I agree with that. Actually, yeah. I, was, I was talking to a, a lady that I met recently who is mm -hmm. from the South mm -hmm. and she, she's a black woman from the south mm -hmm. and uh, we were talking about like dating and like she's been dating a lot of men she's looking she's really looking for a husband mm -hmm. but she was telling me lots of stories of her dating recently and how men just are not very polite and they just say hey when are we going out you know like want to go out with me this weekend and then she writes back and says you know like they're texting it's like well you're not a gentleman are you that's not a way to ask a lady out and I was like oh to me that's fine a guy just says, hey, you want to go out this weekend to me? You know, I was born on the West Coast, you know, very informal. Mm -hmm. That's totally fine with me. Yes. You want to go out this weekend? Mm -hmm. But for her, she's like, that is no way to invite somebody on a date. And I like, really? So she's mm -hmm. like, I am, you know, a proper Southern lady. You have to be more romantic with me. You have to, you know, I don't know, lead up to it. Mm -hmm. You have to be, you know, express wor other words. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's like so different from kind of right. the way I was brought up. But she's like, my father was always such a gentleman with my mother and he always spoke so sweetly to her and kindly. And I'm like, in my family, it was just like, hey, let's go out. <laughs> yes. So you can see you're, you're very right. There's very different mm -hmm. cultures within the United States too. Mm -hmm. I think depending yeah. upon and how also people through raised. generations, yeah, mm -hmm. generations also wise, how um, in all the time it can be a letter and you plan this date, maybe for a month, mm. right? And the person would come um, up to the place with the car, maybe, and uh, flowers and maybe ask parents first if it's okay don't text i have this the, yeah. yes but yeah a yeah. note here from jane don't text yeah that's a little bit well you know things are changing these days mm -hmm. yeah if you only really, really be polite yeah you should probably give somebody a call on the phone instead of texting yes and why texting can be confusing because um okay maybe somebody asks uh say why texting can be confusing Anybody? No tone. No tone. Yes. Mm. I cannot hear. No tone. No tone on it. No tone, no, no yes. Sound, no sound. No sound. No the way you can say one thing uh, and use the same words to meaning a completely different thing. 
Yes, uh, exactly. People learn with the experience to recognize these tips uh, and the sound. And we are writing is much more difficult to put that. That why we that's why we have emoticons. Yes, exactly. But it is a, a trick language for people do not understand them well. Mm. Yes, mm. yes, very good. Yes, according to the uh, study, uh, only from four to seven percent uh, verbs uh, constitute in conversation. Only up to seven percent. All the rest is body language, it's intonation, it's a context or previous knowledge that you know about a person, your perception. Right, your beliefs, what you already think or perceive, it's going to happen. How you understand what they, uh, how this the same phrase can be um, treated or deciphered in a different way according to your upbringing, like the woman from the south, you said, right? Mm -hmm. To her, it is rude and not appropriate. Right? Even the person has very good intentions. Right? So there is miscommunication. But in a, uh, in a telephone, at least a telephone conversation, uh, she could hear a voice. They could exchange some questions and answers to clarify something, right? She can say, why? Or he could say, oh, I really uh, am impressed. Um, by you and I really want to spend time and to know you instead of just will you go out with me right so that is why uh, in all conversations uh, but particular in romantic relationship uh, voice intonation uh, tonality if it is friendly if it is compassionate if it is warm this is most important, even more than words, right? Because you can say, oh, you're my stupid little thing, right? But you can say it lovingly and person will be pleased. <laughs> and you can say something very, I love you, but with the intonation that does not depict this warm feeling, it will not tell uh, you. Uh, what you intended to say, just words, using words, especially in texting. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, uh, can, can anybody comment about when you say, I love you? When do you say it? And that, what does it mean to you? And it's probably, it can be different in different cultures. When do you say, I love you? What does it mean? Oh, Nicole, we cannot hear you. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, yeah. I was just mentioning, um, feel free to unmute yourselves and speak. There's a very small group and you guys are pretty quiet. So um, we can talk a little bit more. If you're shy, you can still write in the, cha in the chat though. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, maybe everybody's shy or thinking about it. When you're saying when to what we, your question was? Yes. When do we say I love you? Are you talking about in general in, or the first in time? romantic relationship, right? The first in time of, or in general? For the first time. Right. Okay, because I think yes. that is a very difficult subject. The when do you say I love you for the first time? And what does that mean? And yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of TV programs and movies that address that issue. Uh, I think uh, it depends on person to person and his uh, way of uh, communication. Uh, there are people who can't say I love you with uh, their words. And uh, unfortunately, I am myself from one of those. Mm. All right. Uh, but how... Uh, have you he uh, read or maybe heard about the book? It says five languages of love. 
Oh, yes. I've yeah. heard of that. And, and, it, and it's actually Marvel. I haven't read the book, but I've heard the idea. And it's marvelous. And I think it's really true. Yeah. Oh, well, yes. This is, um, uh, it's Gary Champ Chapman. Uh, and um, I think I get it. Yeah. Yes. The five love languages, right? And it is, there is audible that you can subscribe or so buy on Amazon. Um, and um, it actually provides information that people can express love in five different ways. Some people just love to do something for a person. And it is one way to express love. Some people like to say it. Some people take care of a person. Uh, so there are different ways. And uh, um, if you know about it, then it can help you to realize that you are still loved and uh, cherished rather than to blame the person that the person doesn't say, I love you. Um, I have read an article recently of, um, and it was a Chinese, uh, a person uh, who was born in China, but lives in America. And from her perspective in America, uh, the words, I, I love you, are used too much often. Maybe in everyday situation that people call each other and say, oh, I love you, right? Also, I love is used for things. I love this car, I love this dress. And in other languages, um, there are different words for romantic love and for uh, love for some objects. And also they are more careful in how, how they say it. It's almost like they are committing themselves to somebody when they say it. Mm -hmm. So can we hear from other perspectives? Like how is it in your culture? So anybody who did not speak before. Oh, let's see. I have, uh, let's see, a message from Ken. Mm -hmm. Let's see. After creating a good impression and trust, you can say, I love you. Mm -hmm. hmm. Right. Then, then it can be believable, right? Because you cannot say it uh, on the first date. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully you know that person a little bit more, <laughs> unless you've known the person for many, many years, that, mm -hmm. you know, and you finally have a first date after a while. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, Jasmine says, when I feel comfortable with the person, mm -hmm. I can say I love you. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So for some people, uh, it's physical touch. It is important to be hugged, to keep hands together to kiss, right? And do you know the um, um, sign for Valentine's also XO? Oh. It's kisses and hugs, right? Some people don't know it, okay. that what it means, right? It's X kisses, right? And O hugs, it's like zero, yeah. And for other, a lot of people, quality time, that when a person is in love or loves, uh, then uh, it's a natural desire to spend more time with the person uh, of um, uh, effectuation or how you call it, the partner. So that's why the words are very important but um, you will believe it if it is supported by either actions, right? Or other things that um, are on the background of these words. So words are important, but it's not enough. Okay, Delaram yes. says you can say I love you when, um, mm -hmm. when you're sure about the feeling. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, going back to the love languages, uh -huh. love um, languages okay. mm -hmm. I think it applies in a slightly different way. You uh -huh. realize that some that people express their love in different ways. Yeah. But um, let's say if your 
specific way to express love is, um, let's say, with um, words, right? Yes. But yes. your partner's expectation is receiving gifts. Right. You're not going to have a good relationship because the partner is always going to be wanting something that you're not giving them. So you have to realize what your partner's love languages are. Yes, right? it's a very good point. And that's why you need to listen and also to observe how the other person expresses his or her love. Mm -hmm. If if this person tries to be with you, maybe it's co co quality of time. If the person gives you so small gifts, it's probably the way uh, that how uh, they expect uh, to get love. Exactly. Love. So you have to be cognizant of your partner's kind mm -hmm. of that, like the way they are in their expectation. And I have... You can watch your friends also and how they behave. How do your friends express their, you know, the, the fact that they like and love you? Mm -hmm. And I have a friend that, you know, every time, you know, birthdays and Christmas and everything, she's always like, I have this gift for you, right? And she's always has these gifts. Mm -hmm. And um, she's, you know, that's how she expresses. You know, she's always okay. like, I have a gift for you. I have something for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, personally, me, I don't care about gifts. You know, I don't care about material things. But... I want to spend time with people. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when they take the time to maybe send you a special note or like they show, show you in some way, um, yeah, maybe like equality time or words. But to me, I'm like, oh, gifts, yeah, it's like a material things. But, but you recognize when you're aware that these different languages, that's her way of expressing love. And so I should probably also make the effort to give her gifts because mm -hmm. then she'll feel my love in that way. Whereas maybe if I do something different, she won't recognize that yes, that's yes. what I'm doing. And that is why I have a, um, uh, a page where um, gives some tips on this. And it can be asking questions, right? And ask a person what makes you happy or what can I do for you? Or also listen more than talk, right? So it's not only about you, but also to express the interest and curiosity about the other person's feelings. Also pauses are very important. They provide some space around um, you and uh, it's like you can be like two bubbles that have distinct boundaries but they are close to each other providing space to for each other to breathe and to be who you are at the same time to be close and appreciate each other making pauses provides space for the other person to comment or to provide some important information when you say something and you don't need to speak all the time and to feel silence right this is where some um, moments uh, this is when uh, other types of communication can be in place like holding a hand or a hug or looking into somebody's eyes. And uh, we mentioned before, watch a tone and if it is friendly. And encouraging words are always important, whether you speak or write on text, but it is more difficult to express it in text and in messaging. That's why it's always better personal communication or at least to hear the voice. Yeah, smile, smile is so important. And it, uh, it is healthier even to smile because it gives you um, some signals to the brain that everything is fine. It provides some chemicals in the brain that makes you feel younger and more vital and um, lovable. And you look beautiful and younger when you smile. So posture and eye contact are so important. And also be positive. 
uh, express possibilities instead of looking some all the time for some negative or negativity in other people. Um, can you expect that uh, the other person likes you instead of thinking that there is something wrong? Because the inner messages can sabotage your messages of about yourself and uh, type communication. So um, the tip for today is uh, always think what to say and how you say it, because this is how we create a relationship. So intonation and tones are very important. Okay, so now let us read one story and uh, decide what happened and why, right? Let us do it together. We won't uh, break into groups, yeah. I can make it probably bigger. I don't know, let me see. Can you see this story well or not? A little bit small. Small, right? How can I do this? Um, you'll have to go back into your original slide. Mm -hmm. Instead of... Um, so I need to stop sharing? No, you, share? you just... No? You're in the slide presentation mode. You go back to the actual slide mode and then you can expand it when you're in the slide mode. I mean, when you're mm -hmm. in, um, I don't know what's, um, you're in presentation mode right now when you're showing it, but when you're actually yes. kind of working in the slides, you can expand it there. Mm -hmm. so, Zoom it a little bit. This is what I am looking for. It, it does not show on my screen. I know where it is, uh -huh, maybe here. Uh, now it disappeared again. Share screen. That's better. Like this? That's, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Can you make it even bigger? Yes. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That looks pretty good. I can see it. Yeah. All right. So the love letters. Yeah. Can anybody volunteer to read it aloud? Hmm. Anybody want a little practice? Okay, let me try I can it. start. I can start. Okay, okay Elvira. Okay. Yeah. The love letters. Uh, Ming Fu and Li uh, met in the party for Ming Fu. It was love at first sight. Hello, he said to Li. I'm Ming Fu. Uh, Li looked at him and smiled. Hi, she said. I am Li. Ming Fu and Li laughed and talked all evening. When they left the party, it was 2 a.m. For the next year, Ming Fu and Li were together every weekend. They went everywhere together, to movies, to parks, to museums, and to restaurants. One night at a romantic restaurant, Ming Fu asked uh, Li, will you marry me? No, Li answered. I'm not ready to get married. I cannot believe it, Ming Fu thought. He doesn't want to marry me, but I love you. What can I do? Maybe somebody else <laughs> can talk. Okay, thank you. All right, good job. Uh -huh. Yes, another person. Okay, Ming Fu began writing love letters to Li. Every day, he wrote a letter and mailed it to her. I love you. He said in his letters, marry me. Mm -hmm. Every day, the same mailman delivered Ming Fu letters to Li. The mailman always smiled when he gave Li a letter. Another letter from your boyfriend, he said. Ming Fu sent Li a love letter every day for two years, 700 letters all together. Finally, Lee said, I am ready to get married now. 
Did Lee marry Ming Fu? No, she didn't. She married the mailman who delivered the Ming Fu letters. Oh, that's <laughs> awful. Oh this is a true story, right? It's a true story. It's a true story, it's, yes. Yes, it's from the book, Easy True Stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I recognize it. Yeah, oh, I recognize it. Yes. That's sad. That's very sad. <laughs> it's sad for I mean, Fu, exactly. right? But not uh, for Lee. <laughs> Lee is happy. <laughs> All oh my right. gosh. So let uh, us discuss. I think, what yes. Mm -hmm. I think it was obvious because uh, 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 Ming Fu was sitting over there and a mailman was uh, coming daily to her yeah. 700 times to <laughs> deliver a letter. So he has a better exposure. Exactly. And Delaram wrote, because the mailman smiled every day, yeah. you know, arrived yeah. with a smile and a love letter. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it is personal connection, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how body language they... is more important, yes, important. as Delaram says. Yeah. And uh, um, real interaction, right? In real time is mm -hmm. very important. Exactly. Yeah. There is an expression. I, I hope you know it. If not, you can write it down. Do you know this word? Out of sight, out of mind. Do you know what yes. it means? No. Yes. Uh, if somebody is uh, uh, away, he uh -huh. is. Uh, if he is, uh, if somebody is uh, physically away, he is yeah. away from heart as well, from memory yes. as well. Yes, right. That is why <laughs> the male. Could you repeat it again? I didn't yeah. understand. What? How did you say? Yes. Yes. Larissa. <laughs> I'm asking about the last sentence. Could you repeat it again? I didn't understand. It's not clear for me. It is out of sight, out of mind. When, uh -huh. yeah, you cannot, if you don't see a person for a long time, you forget about this person. I see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Great sentence. Yes. Thank you yes. so much. Mm -hmm. I will write it for me. Yes. All right. Are there any other miscommunication? between uh, Ming Fu and Li, what can be done, could have been done differently to win her heart? He said, I love you. And he said, marry me. But maybe something is missing here. I, I cannot tell just for this uh, short story, but uh, I, I, I know I know the similar situation. Probably uh -huh. she was not in interesting from the beginning. Just yeah. instead of saying no, she will say, I'm not ready. It's uh -huh. a polite way to say no. Uh -huh. And as I told you, uh, sending 700 uh, letters is a foolish thing to do. Uh, if you feel that person is not really interesting, it's probably uh, better to move away. And who knows in the future, but for the moment, it's probably after a while to move away. Not perhaps five letters was okay, but 700 is foolish. It's <laughs> probably at that time, he knows that she is not interested. She knows that she's not interesting, but okay. okay. He keeps sending letters. It's, it's foolish. It's, mm -hmm. it's no sense. Uh, people don't get on that. Don't have the grip of, of the two situations. Okay, right. this is just for my reading here. I don't know yes, all the details. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Yes, I endorse uh, Simon's point of view. Letters doesn't uh, convey the feelings. Yes. If he had a, a chance, he uh, could have come himself and uh, yes. talked to her face to face. He might have won her. Yes. Mm -hmm. But something else, did he ever ask her how she feels? Did she ask in his letters even about her feelings and or what she was doing? It never even expressed her, his interest in her affairs. It's all about him. That is a very interesting thing. Yeah. 
of course uh, she needs uh, some pay attention and some um, knowing him uh, then uh, can decide about it yes yes very good all right okay very good thank you so um let us go to a different slide um now i stop share this one right and go back to my presentation No. Stop share. Okay. screen. Mm -hmm. All right. So then there are many other ways how to say I love you, right? If it is in words and we speak about speaking in English, how to express words that there are different ways. And it can be you mean the world to me, or you are the love of my life, or you are special to me. If you know, uh, know a person for some time, and uh, one of idiomatic expression, I am head over heels for you. Have you heard this? I am head over heels. Right. All right. So then, mm -hmm. um, usually when people are already in committed relationship, they do not use uh, uh, proper names, but some uh, endearments. And we spoke uh, uh, already about baby or babe, but there are different other things uh, that uh, different words like honey or dearest or gorgeous, sweet pie. Um, in the heart, there are different other ways, right? The heart itself is made on this uh, slide, is made up of words of endearment. Like uh, Nicole, when do you say pumpkin? Is it for children only or for lovers too? Pumpkin, I have never pumpkin? heard it. Yes. yes. Uh, I usually hear that from maybe like a small child. Yeah not a, a romantic relationship yeah right? like yeah. yeah yeah i've heard that very small children usually yeah yes. or dream boat i have never heard about dream boat um i think some of these might be a little bit um antiquated like maybe a little bit old-fashioned expressions that are things change so quickly these days and very much go according to pop culture so what people see in movies and you know hear see and hear in movies tv music is what they tend to copy and so uh -huh. whatever is new this month this year the old stuff is out right uh -huh. yeah. so maybe like sweet pea you know you don't hear that anymore maybe maybe you heard it 50 years ago love yeah. bug yeah yeah same so thing a, a lot of these are a little bit older uh -huh. yeah um so you kind of have to look, you know, what are you hearing in songs mm -hmm. and seeing in movies mm -hmm. and TV? And that'll yeah. tell you kind of what the the common stuff is these days. It and changes Tootsie, quickly. Yeah. yeah. The title of a, a, a movie. Yeah. Tootsie, right? Yeah. Like it's a like a pretty face or how would you say? Pretty oh, Tootsie? face? Mm, Tootsie? No, that was, that's something pretty. that probably hasn't been used in decades. Yeah. Um, Tootsie. Mm, yeah, I haven't. I don't. I mean, I know the movie, but I don't, I've never heard it as a term of endearment. Yeah. But things also can change by region, as you mentioned earlier. Like the southern mm -hmm. part of the U.S. will have its yeah. own culture, and different states and different regions down there will mm -hmm. have different cultures. So um, the yeah. southern oh. mm -hmm. southern yeah. region. Oh, Southern region tends to be much more um, traditional in yes. some things like, you know, what we did in the old days and the way we did things, they still hold mm -hmm. on to that quite a lot. Yeah. So you might hear 
you know, some mm -hmm. of those older expressions that I'm not quite sure, actually, I'm not really familiar with the South. So mm -hmm. you may still hear some of those older expressions there. Yes, I lived in Tennessee for 10 years. Mm. Yeah, but I chose the ones that are really used even now, and it can be dearest, right? Dearest, especially older couples, right? Mm -hmm. They use it, but dearest is very neutral and uh, it is used, especially in writing. Mm. Yeah. 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 But my love, right, is also yeah. good. My love. Yeah. yeah. Can I have your attention, my love? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Baby, honey, right? Dear. Hey, gorgeous, right? People say this for, for women, mm -hmm. especially. Uh, sometimes um, some animals can be used like, do you know, like my hedgehog. <laughs> oh, my, <laughs> <laughs> my hedgehog. Wait, yeah. are those soft or are hedgehogs um, mm -hmm. kind of spiny? Aren't hedgehogs yeah. spiny? And it's probably uh, the person was like this before <laughs> when they met. Oh this my god! Nickname. Yeah, I know a couple that it was hedgehog. Like oh my hedgehog. gosh! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, maybe somebody um, respond. How do you prefer to be called? What is your way? How would you respond? What you consider not sleazy, not too. <laughs> old fashioned or what is the best way to call you actually so, all of you guys who are pop culture fans what i mean by pop culture you know movies tv what what do you hear recently like in the in current movies and current songs what are the terms of endearment that are being used I'm yeah, always kind of the, the last to know because I don't watch a lot of like movies and I TV. So, yeah. so I'm like the last to know about what the, you know, the newest thing that everybody's saying. So a lot of you guys are probably much more uh, bigger fans of uh, movies and, and music than I am. And you might know. Um, couples. Oh, Azhar. Azhar, are you um, from India? He says in his culture, couples oh, do not. Oh, Pakistan. Couples do not call one another. Do you mean you don't call each other by your first name or you don't use the terms of endearment? Uh, generally, uh, we don't use names for calling one another. Uh, hmm. Rather expression A, O, E, R. Hmm, so you don't use the person's first name at all and you don't use it term of endearment either you say hey you come here yeah <laughs> <laughs> interesting <laughs> yeah it's uh, somewhat uh, yeah hmm yeah for the english speaking person it can be rude right they can consider it yeah probably my goodness um, yeah interesting uh, yeah, uh, it could be, but uh, yeah. it's not like uh, 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 calling somebody, hey, uh, come here, or no, no, it's not a, uh, definitely there are some uh, uh, local uh, words which are used. Oh, uh, can you give an example? Like what? Ade, uh, uh, in my mother tongue, it's a Sindhi, uh, we call uh, 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 both. Both his spouse can call one another. Ade, ade, meri baat sun lo. What does uh, it mean? It means uh, listen to me. Uh, <laughs> buddy, listen to me. Huh? Curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. We had yeah. another one. Delaram mentioned sweetheart. Yeah, yeah sweetheart. I think you hear sweetie, mm -hmm. sweetie, mm -hmm. yes. sweetheart. Yeah, I think we still hear that one. So, yeah. So what are the current ones? Um, I definitely hear babe a lot. Babe, yeah. babe. Baby and babe, I think, are pretty common, even young, with mm -hmm. young people, especially babe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Both male and female, actually. 
Hmm. Yeah, we'll have to uh, be on the lookout for these or on the listen, I should say. <laughs> right. For what and the you most can, common. Yes. And if you um, communicate with an English speaking partner, maybe you can ask, how do you want me to call you? Right. What would you prefer? Or it can be a full name and nickname, maybe the person has. And the nickname is shorter and only for close people. So mm. it can be just a nickname. Yeah. To whom you are addressing? Uh, uh, say it again. To whom you are saying, um, ad, uh, asking. I oh. am uh, you are asking uh, to whom? Are you asking to me? You you ask your English speaking partner because <laughs> our topic we our topic how to make romantic relationship but in English right? Okay. And um, mm. uh, especially if you are in English speaking countries, so this is the ways how people address to each other when they are in romantic relationship or a long-term relationship. Ashar, where are you located now? Mm -hmm. uh, I am here in uh, Karachi. Oh, you're in Pakistan. Pakistan. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You're not in the US. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but um, if um, you um, come to the United States and would like to find a partner and have to speak English, probably it is um, good to know that what is expected and how people do it, right? Mm -hmm. To establish this relationship, yeah. right? Many of, my fr uh, many of my family members are there. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so maybe you have this opportunity. All right, let's see what else we have in our let's see. stock. Yeah, all right, I have another, do we have time for another story? It is 11.30. Yes, all right. So there is another story and uh, it's about a letter. So a um, written word can also create warm feelings if it is, uh, um, craft it uh, in a way that depicts your feelings well and takes in consideration the other person's interests. And uh, this is an older way how to establish relationship. Uh, nowadays, um, not so many people write letters anymore, but this story about um, the letter that reunited a couple after 16 years, right? So let us read this one and see, uh, there are some good expressions and it is um, in, uh, uh, it is retold almost in first person in a direct speech, uh, how it was recorded. And you can see, um, if you want, you can take a picture and look at, um, uh, internet later. It is also a recorded version uh, how when they captured the story and it, it is a true story. Mm -hmm. All right, can we ask somebody uh, who did not participate before to read it? Yeah, and we can um, maybe two paragraphs and then somebody else. Yes, I can read. Hi, Please. Uh, a British man and his Spanish former sweetheart have finally married uh, 16 years after they drifted apart. Uh, re reun uh, re renewed? Reunited, yeah. Reuni uh, yes, reunited by a love lo uh, letter lost behind a fireplace for over a decade. Reports said Monday. Steph Smith and uh, Carmen Ruiz Perez, both now uh, 42, fell in love 17 years ago when she was a foreign exchange student in Brixham and got engaged after only a year together. 
but the relationship ended after she moved to France uh, to run a shop in Paris. Very a good, thank years. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you. And somebody else? Do we have any volunteers? I can probably do it. So okay. I start with uh, a few years yes. later. Yes. Okay. A few years mm -hmm. later, in a bid to rekindle their life, their love, Smith sent a letter to her mother's home in Spain. It was placed on the mantelpiece, but slipped down behind the fireplace and was lost for over a decade. Mm -hmm. The missing missive was only found when the builders removed the fireplace during renovation work. Is that it? Uh, you can, uh, one more, one more sentence. Uh, let me go, ah, uh, no, where is it? How can I do it? Uh, Okay. When I got yeah. the letter, I didn't phone Steve right away because I was so nervous. Reese Perez, I don't know how to read the name, uh -huh. told her, mm -hmm. her heard, uh, heard Express a local newspaper. Okay, very good. And somebody else. Do you have patience? Any brave people here? Please help us. Elvira? Oh, anybody? Oh, Nicole, you are muted. Okay, let's see. Where yeah. where do I start from? Yes. Um, from the top? Wait, no, where are we? No. I nearly didn't phone no. him. Yes. It's the second one down, right? But, but I knew had to make a call. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. How yeah. much do you want me to read? The whole thing? Or in a white somebody. I cannot see them. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I think Peishan is a little bit shy. Uh -huh. um, Sergey, we haven't heard from Sergey at all either. I don't know Sergey. Yeah, Sergey, uh, can you read it? I too, can try also. There we go. Elvira. Uh, when they were re um, reunited, it was a time had stood still, said Smith, a factory supervisor. When he met again, it was like a film. He ran across the airport into each other's arms. We met up and fell in love all over again. Within 30 seconds of setting eyes of each other, we were kissing. I'm just glad the letter did eventually end up where it was supposed to be, he said, after the couple married last Friday. Okay. Hmm. All right, so it's a, a, a true story too, yeah? All right, so let us uh, discuss this story. What did you find? So don't, don't pay attention to this. Uh, I can stop sharing for now. Uh, what can you tell from this story? What is important also for people to stay connected and to stay in a relationship? So anybody, you can text or raise your hand. I think uh, it's about uh, the communication is the key thing. If, they, yes. uh, if people keep uh, communicating, they yes. will express their feeling and uh, their relationship mm -hmm. breakups could have been served. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, if we don't express our feelings to one another, nobody knows it. Yes. For 70, uh, many years, it was a break. Uh, there, there wasn't any communication. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't make it. But once uh, the letter came out, uh, mm -hmm. They had a patch up and reunited. Yes, yes, very good. 
Yeah, it's my cat is scratching here. <laughs> um, all right, anybody else? Uh, and um, is it important what words you're using and how, what style you're using, right? So it's not only a, a collection of words expressing your feelings, but also how you engage another person in the relationship. And the style is very important. And uh, it's also art of writing letters, right? Yeah, and uh, writing is important. Um, I know I have another story, we don't have time for it now, but um, when people meet online, for example, and they text first to each other. And uh, if they, uh, there are a lot of mistakes or even punctuation is wrong, it can be considered as a set off and people don't want to continue, right? So very often, even um, the knowledge of the language itself, right? It, to be educated is also important, especially if the other person has these qualities, they are looking for similar level of education and command of English. Right, so, and uh, there are a lot of um, comments that say why it's such a good person, right? He can do so many things and he is well off and he is good looking and say, mm. oh, he uses double negatives. I cannot tolerate this, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like my criteria as an English teacher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you using grammar properly? If not, right. I will not date you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, also, I have an article also, I did not include it here and say, um, uh, uh, what to, uh, how to date an English speaking person. And it is all about language, right? How to use a proper language because it can be either miscommunication or actually it's signal that the person is not willing to learn the language of mutual communication for mutual understanding. Right. So that is why our topic uh, is about using the language for establishing or maintaining or igniting a romantic relationship, especially if you use it um, in the country where the language is uh, um, the main the first language of the country. However, it can be important for community. English is international language. Uh, I speak English with people from Spain because I don't speak Spanish, right? English is a language of communication. Um, I know that Russian pe people speak with Chinese people through English, right? And that is why it is sort of uh, the language itself establishes the boundaries and norms and expectations. Okay. All right. Okay. Do you have any questions or any uh, issues that we need to discuss? Or maybe share your story? So let us do questions. Um, one uh, also question, would you be interested, do you think that um, a course which um, um, goes into more details for each issue we discussed can be created? Would it be a good idea? Would you be interested in taking the class? Um, and what aspects it would be good to discuss. Because it's a broad topic. Yeah. I see yeah. Delaram. Oh, you can see the chat at this point, Larissa. Uh, yes. yes. Delaram says yes. It would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, which aspects are most uh, 
interesting or uh, important for you personally and everybody maybe have has different uh, point of view but still from your point of view what are the uh, things that maybe prevent you from getting into um, rewarding relationship or what do you expect what skills do you need to develop that can be enhanced with this course Vocabulary. Vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Collocations. Yes. Collocations are very good. Mm -hmm. So much silence out there. Idioms. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very good suggestion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about cultural and psychological side? Would it be important to see um, um, to help with self love? and self-presentation. Of course, it says yes. So we need to speak um, the language of love to ourselves first, mm -hmm. to feel lovable and respected mm -hmm. and valuable even before we present ourselves to the partner. Yes, okay, very good. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, now, humor plays a big role in relationship. And usually people fall in love with people who laugh at their jokes. It is considered that the person understands and it is on the same level of understanding the world. If they laugh at the same things, at the, at the same jokes and they understand the jokes, which is all, also can be tricky from cultural perspective, right? In order to understand jokes, you need to understand history and culture and geography and psychological aspects where does it come from why it is funny um, uh, this cultural acuity uh, comes um, according to a scientific study after seven years of living in the same country so in order to understand this cues what is funny that's why very often when people do not understand a joke or comedy, standing comedians, it's not because of the lack of the language skills, it's um, cultural cues are missing. And that's why it's, it cannot be not funny. But sometimes it's different values, how you look at the world. And that's why if you find the same things are funny, it another bonding effect, right? So can anybody tell us uh, some funny stories? Maybe uh, something that happened at the first date and it was funny, maybe sometimes awkward, but uh, it bonded people together. Yeah, anybody can share a story, love story or first date story? <laughs> okay. or the worst date story those are always yeah. funny right <laughs> when somebody yeah. has terrible dating experience <laughs> if anybody <laughs> wants to tell any stories yeah. 
And sometimes it can be terrible experience as it felt at that time, but it actually tested the person's per uh, character. Right? The person did not leave the person, right? And gave another chance. Right? <laughs> or there is a, a radio show uh, uh, on local radio uh, in uh, five two five. I forgot, uh, 92.5. Mm. And on Tuesdays, they have a second date. Uh, people call the radio show and to call the other person who did not show up for the second date and to oh. ask why. Oh, my right. gosh. And this hilarious story what happened and why <laughs> it prevented <laughs> uh, people um, from going to the second date. Right, and can be funny or some tragic, some oh my strange. Right, it's probably uh, some assumptions. I think a lot of yes. times we make assumptions about other people without really mm -hmm. knowing, right. and we just we see something, hear something, and just assume, yes. and then maybe that's a mistake, right? Yes. For example, exactly. in the movies, a lot of times in TV, you see this a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody sees the other person hugging someone and they just assume that's their girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse, whatever. And it turns out to be the sister, right? Yes, yes. So they just assumed, oh, he has a girlfriend. So, yes. oh, he's, you know, he's cheating on her with me. Yes. And then it turns out to be the sister or the cousin or something like that. Right. Exactly. So making assumptions yes. is kind of dangerous. It's better to kind of ask questions. Exactly. <laughs> and, and then <laughs> also... Look at the body language, too, to yes. trust the person, because if they're lying to you, likely mm -hmm. their body language will, they'll be tense or, right, you can see it in their, you know, body language. Yes. Yeah. So maybe to give a, a, a doubt, um, a, a, how will you call, call it, uh, give it. Um, um, oh, uh, yeah, I know the expression you're thinking. What uh, The benefit of the doubt. Yes, the mm -hmm. benefit of a doubt. Uh, meaning, uh, do not uh, uh, give yourself to the thought that something is wrong. Maybe give a chance again, right? Give mm -hmm. a chance so or ask mm -hmm. what happened, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe you will find a, a gem, mm -hmm. right? Because usually um, both parties are nervous on the first date, right? And the person wants to create a great impression, like to order oysters <laughs> right in the restaurant. <laughs> but in fact, the oysters can be um, allergic. Oh. Yeah, he can oh, be allergic oh, to oh, oysters. Oh. Yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, oh, actually I have a kind of a funny like- um, Yes, please. Bad date story, like bad yeah. first date story. Yes, uh -huh. Um. So I, you know, several years, several years ago, I, um, I was doing online dating and so I met a few people online dating, you know, when you, f you meet them for the first time in person. So I met this one guy at like a little, little restaurant bar kind of thing for happy hour. <laughs> it was like right next to my office where I was working. Mm -hmm. And so we meet and I didn't know, I sit down and, you know, so hello, whatever. And this is happy hour, right? And so you like you get a drink or maybe like food happy hours usually small food right and so like the first thing he tells me like we just sat down and said hello and it was like oh I'm just gonna order like one small appetizer right for a happy hour because I just had um you know that surgery where people are very um overweight and they have yeah. a surgery to fix their stomach so mm -hmm. it's very small so he's mm -hmm. So he tells me that, um, yeah, I had that um, bariatric surgery. So my stomach is very, very small. I used to weigh like really, you know, like 400 pounds, but now I lost 100 pounds. So I can't eat very much. And if I eat more than just this much, I'm going to throw up. And so he's telling me all this and it's like, hello, hi, you know, and, and he's telling me all of this, like within the first five minutes of the date. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> Does this guy know um, some better topics of conversation other than right, I'm right. going to throw up if I eat more because my stomach is really tiny because I used to be really fat. And he's telling me all this thinking, oh, no, 
I'm like, no wonder he doesn't, uh, you know, have a partner. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyhow, that was one of my funny stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if I can go to share and screen uh, again, uh, <laughs> there are some tips. How much you speak, it's important, right? It, it should be, uh, wait uh, until person, uh, another person ask a question, right? And if it is interesting, then you can add some details, right? But also be brief and it entertaining maybe with this sort of a humor and not to be too serious, right? And give a chance to another person to speak more. All right. All right, thank you. Um, let me go into sharing screen and see what um, other things so that we can miss. Um, so this is phrases to uh, deepen relationship. I can see if you see it. Uh huh. Yes. So, um, let me. Uh, oh, it is now eleven yeah. fifty-three. Ah, okay. Just a few more minutes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so this is um, suggestions. If you ask somebody out, yeah, it's a very neutral, very light phrase. Would you like to go out with me this weekend or tonight or sometime? However, sometime is, um, can indicate that it's not specific. It's uh, not actually an invitation. So it's better if you really want to invite somebody it's better to indicate exactly when, right? Because the person uh, maybe wants to go with you, but depending on the time, right? Or also you can say, can I treat you to a meal or dinner or ice cream? And usually it is suggested for the first date it should not be something expensive that the person should feel obligations to stay with you, right? It can be something small, coffee, maybe ice cream, right? And um, um, in America, it is even, um, it, I just know, especially on the Northwest, uh, women prefer to pay for themselves, right? Or it's go to go Dutch. Do, have you heard this expression, to go Dutch? It means that everybody pays for himself, yourself. Mm -hmm. But in the South, it's usually a man who pays. In, in Europe also, if a man invites, so the man pays. Uh, but dinner um, can have some more expectations about relationships. So that's why maybe it's not a good idea to do it on the first day. But, if you understand that the person is interested and is um, uh, going to continue to see you, then maybe you can invite for a dinner relationship and express that you are interested in romantic relationship. Well, also another one, casual. Do you want to go for a glass of wine or a cup of coffee or drink with me? And then in proposing uh, the traditional way, will you marry me when somebody even gives you um, a ring of an engagement ring, right? And yes, yes, I will. But it can be something like um, asking for uh, opinion, like, would you like to join me in my trip? Or would you like to join me in a party? first before you go into big commitment. Some people call a bit um, or um, live together even before marriage. So you say, move in with me, will you? But uh, the question, will you, this tag question is very important. It's still polite, right? Instead of just move with them move in with me. Will you move with me would be a little bit more formal. But in this way, if you invite somebody to do something, but uh, add will you, it's still polite, not like a command, it's still like a request. 
and uh, I, I have been married to an English speaking uh, person. And I know that uh, very often uh, I was reminded that um, it is important to speak polite in the Russian language. It was okay to say, okay, come here or help me. But in the English language, you say, will you help me, please? Or help me, please. It's different intonation. Um, otherwise, um, it, is, it, it implies that a person gives you a command rather than asking you. And this is important to remember because different languages are structured differently. Intonation also can depict if it, whether it's a command, like in the Russian language, uh, all sentences are pronounced with the fallen intonation and they sound like a command. So it is important to keep up intonation up, right? Like, come in, please. Yeah, sit down, please. Right, help me, please. All right, all right. So, and comforting, what can I do for you? Or just hug, or say nothing, just listen, right? This is some things to establish a connection. We said this, yes. And if you have questions, if you would like to have a course and uh, have uh, more uh, cultural and emotional support, so you can contact me with questions or email me and um, I provide one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, coaching. And it is more uh, about cultural understanding of the use of the language and uh, understanding what you want in life and create the language of success and happiness. All right, thank you.